Welcome to another edition of James Martell's Coffee Talk, where James, successful publisher, speaker, and author of Online Success for Non-Techies, talks frankly and openly with experts from within the internet marketing industry about strategies and techniques you can use to develop a successful online presence for your personal or corporate brand. Here is your host, James Martell. Hi, it's James Martell, and welcome to another edition of Coffee Talk. Today, my special guest is Ed K. Smith of AdwordsMarketing.com and OzDomainer.com. I met Ed a number of years ago down at uh, Commission Junction University in Santa Barbara, and we've had a chance to uh, stay in touch ever since. Coffee Talk listeners would know Ed from a recent session where we talked about Google AdWords, and he's an expert in that field and has uh, specialized in that area for uh, many years, although that's not what we're going to be talking about tonight. What listeners probably are not aware of is that Ed is also an expert in domain names and the business of domaining, and that's what we're going to talk about in this session, the world of domain names, and if you're wondering how we can dedicate an entire coffee talk to this topic... Put your seatbelts on because you're in for a real surprise, I would think, at just how big this topic is. Ed lives in Perth, Australia with his wife Lois and his daughter Sasha. And I had a chance to meet up again with Ed where we first started this conversation about domain names last year, right around this time down at the system seminar in Chicago where we had a chance to take in the event and also uh, do some sightseeing together with Ed and Phil and uh, Cassandra where we hopped on double-decker buses and toured the beach and actually uh, took the elevators to the uh, top of the Sears Tower in uh, Chicago where we uh, were 1,350 feet uh, on what they call the Sky Deck overlooking uh, the city of Chicago with a view of anywhere between 40 and 50 miles. Quite spectacular. Chicago is uh, one of these great cities that I'd recommend anybody that that gets the chance, definitely put it on your to-do list. Ed, thanks so much for joining me on the call. No worries. Thank you, James, and hello, everyone. You know, Ed, one of the things, you know, I love about the Internet and the opportunities that uh, can come from it in the way we can build businesses that are really not too heavy. And, you know, a heavy business would be, somebody with a lot of employees and overhead and leases and, and you know, the, the likes that come with a traditional business. What I, what I absolutely love about the Internet is the ability for us to work on the business from just about anywhere in the world, providing we got a computer with us, of course, and, you know, an Internet connection. Last time you and I talked, you had mentioned that you were planning, and I think this is a great way to kick off the session because... Um, people dream of the lifestyle that you're currently living down in your neck of the woods and that you're planning a very, very special vacation with your wife and daughter. So before we jump into this whole area of domain names, why don't you spend a few minutes, tell us who you are, of course we know where you live, and uh, tell us a little bit about this vacation that uh, you're planning and how you have the ability to do this because of the way you've organized your business. Okay, well... uh we, we like to call it a mini retirement. Um, <laughs> we, uh, if anyone uh, has read the book, The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, you'll know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, I suggest you go and read it. Uh, it's actually uh, a trip we've been planning for a little while. We're, we're going away for anywhere between six and eight months. Um, we're, we're booking ourselves uh, some round-the-world tickets. Uh, we're heading off, leaving from Perth and... Uh, going over to the United Kingdom to uh, to Birmingham, first of all, where uh, Sasha's grandparents, oh, sorry, her great-grandparents are. Um, and then Lois and I are both born in Scotland, so we're spending a fair amount of time in, in Scotland hanging around there. Uh, then across to Europe and doing as much of Europe uh, and spending a fair amount of time. One of the things, we've done this before, but it's usually been very quickly, uh, and that's what probably most people experience is going away for two, three, four, maybe five weeks. Uh, and everywhere is really quick. We, we wanted to just experience places for longer and get to know the, the surrounding areas and the culture. And 
Uh, and then uh, once we finished Europe, but back across to the, uh, the States, uh, do a little bit of America. We, we've done that a couple of times before, so we'll end up going um, to Canada, where we haven't been. And there's this guy I know in Canada. I think his name's James. Oh, that's right. It's you. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll probably catch up with that guy. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, and then probably Japan and Thailand and like that. So there's a lot to do, but because we're sort of we're planning between six and eight months, we can do it. Uh, and because we'll have our laptops, um, you know, as long as we can get an internet connection, which you know will be no doubt challenging at times in some places. Uh, but as long as we can get on, you know, once every uh, uh, two or three days or once a week, even that should should be adequate for what we have to do. So yes, it should should be fun. Sounds like quite the trip. I know we had. Uh, they actually just left town, Paula and Wanda, who are also from your neck of the woods, down the land down under. And uh-huh. they uh, they have been on a two and a half month vacation, which is coming to an end in the next week or so, where they're actually going to be flying back home. But they too, they packed up their laptops and they've been all over North America, all over this continent, just uh, having a great time and working as they go. And it's one of those beautiful things that uh, the internet allows us to do, which is travel and and bring our businesses with us. Unlike early days where. You know, I may be in construction or running my little local geographically tied uh, telecom business where you had to be here because this is where the business was. The nice thing about the Internet is the freedom that uh, it brings us. So it's just you're, you're, you're a great example of, of what can be done. A, a six- or eight-month uh, trip around the world is probably uh, on a lot of people's to-do list. So congrats to you for uh, pulling it off. Yeah, it, it should it should be fun. So um, yeah, but again, as you said, without without the ability to 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 work online, uh, a, a lot of this stuff just wouldn't be possible. Um, and you know, twelve twelve even fourteen years ago when the internet first started, I I don't think people even really had the concept of of how flexible we'd all be, particularly with the wireless uh, internet that's you know become more prevalent over the last you know five years and cafes, etc. You know, you can go into pretty much any Starbucks store in America now and you've got three wireless access. So. Yeah, it's quite something. So let's let's jump into this topic of domain names. I know we chatted about it in Chicago last year and I know Phil and I have been discussing it and you and I have had a couple of conversations about it since and it really wasn't something that I had actually even considered as a coffee talk until I had a chance to talk with you about it as you got into great detail in whole areas that I was not even familiar with. And I thought, you know what, this is very interesting stuff, and we should probably uh, get you on. So it's great to have you, and I think uh, listeners are in for a real treat as we, uh, as I got some questions here for you, and you can talk to us, if you would, about this whole world of domain names. I think... Probably the place to start would be right at the beginning, and assuming that uh, you know a domain name. I remember when I got started back in uh, 1999, how confusing this whole little area was of what is a domain name, how does it relate to the hosting, uh, how does it all tie together, what's a DNS, and I, I remember just being completely confused about the whole thing. I didn't really know how the pieces fit together. So before we get into some of the really cool stuff, why don't we start off with some of the basics, if you, we could, and why don't you just explain uh, what a domain name is? Okay. Well, th- th- there's several several ways of just explaining what a domain name is, but really it, all it is is a way of identifying a computer on the internet. Um, all, all computers, when the <coughs> excuse me, when the internet first started out, uh, were assigned numbers, and they called it an IP address, and they still are. Uh, assigned IP addresses today, so it's basically like the phone number for a for a computer. It's a way of like that computer out of all the millions of other systems that it's uh, connected up with. Um, but what they did to make things easier, rather than people having try to try and remember one 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 dot two six seven dot four seven eight dot two port two four, they actually assign a name to that number. So, for example, they would have osdomainer.com. Now, that has a specific IP address that's connected to that domain name. So it just makes it easier for people to remember a name rather than a number. And and really, it's just a way of pointing to, to where that computer is. That's, that's the simplest way. Um, 
but if, I mean, if you look at it in, in the, the, the sense of, uh, you know, like a, a, a physical piece of real estate, it's someone's address um, as well. So does that make sense? Yeah, that makes, that makes perfect sense. So when, so when we use some of the terminology then, you know, such as a DNS or domain name server, uh, you're, what you're saying is every computer has a number or has been assigned a number, and this we use the domain name so to simply, uh, you know, they're easy to re- easier to remember. You know, obviously, OzDomainer.com is much easier to remember than the long version of the, the of the numbers. And if you know the IP address and you type that, and you end up on the website as well, just as if that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's just it's hum- it humanizes the whole process. Uh, you know, for example, uh, you know, if you're looking for pizzas online, you could type in pizza.com. Uh, and that is a subject we'll talk about later as well. But uh, you know, it's easier to remember pizza.com than the whole number. So, but yeah, that's just how it evolved. And uh, the the industry is has really got to know that the dot com is is the main uh, domain extension. You, you can all still hear me, I'm assuming. Yep. Yep. Just fine. Sorry, I, I heard I heard some funny noises. So. I, <laughs> so dot, not a problem. Dot, we're dot, talking. We're, we're literally talking clear across the planet here. So if there's a, yeah, a little latency, right. yeah, n- not a problem. Okay. Um, yeah. Dot dot com is the the main uh, what they call uh, ex- you know domain extension, uh, and that's that's the one that everyone has known, and that's the one that all the marketing has been you know uh, up until the, the, what they call the dot com crash, where there were lots of companies putting huge amounts of money uh, behind that name. Uh, it was a case that everyone was uh, exposed to the dot com over years and years and years of marketing. So, so um, you know, there's been billions of dollars spent getting people to to have that sort of come automatically. They'll type in, in into the address bar at the top of their their browser. They'll type in pizza dot com. Um, that's usually the first extension that they think of. Yes. You know, um, it's there funny. Are, as affiliates, you know, when I've been running around the business for almost uh, coming up on 10 years myself, uh, this whole area of domain names, it's one of those uh, uh, topics that if you only knew what you know now back then, what a difference it could have made. And I know early on when we were registering domain names, we were, you know, I wasn't really looking for the holy grail type of domain names, although I ended up with some half-decent ones just by accident, really. I wasn't thinking of the resale of domains and some of the areas that you're currently working on in the business in the in the area of domaining and I know as affiliates we're always looking at domain names and one of the things that we talk about when we're trying to work with our sites uh, is picking the right domain name based on the industry that we're working on the target market that we're going after and uh, you do that as well but you've got also got a whole much broader p- picture of domain names for uh, you know I was quite surprised to learn that there's guys out there that have made a business, a big business, out of just purchasing, buying, and selling domain names and various ways of bringing traffic into these domain names. So why, why don't we get into, why don't you kind of lay the groundwork here as far as, because uh, I know we got some crossover here. We talked about this a couple of days ago when we chatted where domain names are more valuable if they've got content on the site in many cases, and sometimes they don't. And in our case, Lots of affiliates, I know myself, I've probably got, I'm guessing, 180, 200 different domain names. Most of them are, you know, sitting out there on the web somewhere. A lot of them are parked and not doing anything with them. And I know there's lots of people in that boat who have been buying domain names and not really doing anything with them. So why don't you bring us up to date on this whole world of domain names? Okay. I mean, to think back in 19... Uh well, even earlier than 1994, but uh, when when the internet really got started, domain names were free to register. Um, Network Solutions, the company that was the main provider of domain names back then, they were giving them away for free. Uh, so, you know, if you, if you had your head screwed on, you had a bit of vision back then, there was, there was some exceptionally good profits to be made down the track. I mean, <laughs> okay. after a while, you still had to pay the registration fee. And this, this is what put a lot of people off in the early days. Uh, Unlike now, we can register a, a domain name anywhere from sort of six and a half dollars up to eight or nine dollars, depending on where you go. Uh, it was you know between seventy and a hundred dollars on average to register a domain name, so you know, it's ten times as much. You know, so it was it was a lot more expensive. So 
people who really understood what the future of the internet was and they knew that the domain name was really the first call, that nothing else happened without the domain name, uh, they, they really sort of took advantage to it. And it was sort of, uh, you know, you had, you had a, a gold rush mentality back then for the people who really grabbed onto it. And a lot of those people have thousands of domain names in their, in their portfolio. And, and the rule is the more generic the domain name is, and here's, here's one thing I'll say straight off the bat, uh, do not under any circumstances register a domain name that has anything to do with a company name or trademark or anything like that. Uh, do your due diligence, check that there are no trademarks around a name that you're thinking of registering, uh, yep. because it, it could, could cause you a world of hurt. <laughs> so, uh, in today's uh, society of litigation, uh, just, just check. Um, you, you're safe if you stick with generic type uh, domain names that do not have any attachment to trademarks. Just sort of get that out of the way. Uh, but people were registering words like, you know, cars, uh, telephone, pizza, hardware, or, or you know, anything you can think of. Any generic term that someone is searching for on the internet, people are registering these words. So the more generic it is and the shorter it is, the more value it has. Uh, and, and in particular, if it has a commercial application associated with it. Um, if you're just registering a document that is um, a description of something or it might be uh, the word uh, phrases or you know, so, something like that. But if you're, if you're registering a domain name that has a commercial application like cars or photocopiers or anything like that, then obviously a lot of money can be made from that situation. Um, a, another sort of area that people were focusing on is what they call uh, geo domains, which is uh, the geographic um, equivalent in a domain name. So it would be something like palmsprings.com. Um, now, I'm speaking with some gentlemen tomorrow. I'm interviewing them, uh, and they, they're actually the owners, uh, David and Michael Costello, uh, and they have a whole host of uh, generic ge- uh, geographic domain names. They own palmsprings.com, and that domain itself, brings in just over a million dollars a year uh, in income from type-in traffic. Now, type-in traffic is one of the things that is appealing with generic, low, single-word or even two-word uh, domain names because people actually think, gee, I wouldn't mind getting a pizza tonight or I wouldn't mind finding a new car or I want to go and book a, 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 an aircraft you know, a flight or I want to go travelling. So they'll, they'll, they'll have a name in their head. Now, most people will go and do a search on Google, but yeah. there's somewhere between 25 and 35 percent population. Go directly to the browser bar and type in the domain name, having a guess. You think there's probably something at cars.com or there's something at travel.com or there's something at hotels.com, and they just type that into the browser bar. So that's for direct navigation or type-in traffic, and, and that is where those domains are worth a lot of money. Um, so if there's anything else you wanted to ask me on that point, I'll keep going. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's quite – and that was stunning for me to learn that. And, like, I wasn't aware that so many people would just go – instead of going to Google, because we obviously live in the search engine world with paid or natural search, uh, somebody would head over to their browser, open up Internet Explorer, and instead of – visiting a search engine, they just type in. Do they actually type in www.palmsprings.com or do they just type yes, in Palm Springs? Yes, Some, so, or, or both. They'll, they'll do both. Um, and what happens quite a lot nowadays is even if you just typed in Palm Springs, Google itself will often redirect uh, traffic straight through to the, the, the page that they think is most qualified to, to dish out the information regarding that name. So you do, do some experimenting, um, you guys that are listening on, on the call, and just type in just type in some names into the browser bar and see what happens. Uh, you'll be fascinated at where you end up getting taken. Quite often, if you don't put the .com or the www before, um, it might just take you to some uh, Google results. Yeah. Um, particularly if you're using Firefox, I think Firefox is teamed with Google. Um, I, don't, I don't use Internet Explorer very often, and you, you get different results from different browsers. But... Regardless of the browser, whether it's Firefox or Safari or Internet Explorer, if you type in palmsprings.com, it'll take you to palmsprings.com. <laughs> so, and, and, and that's the power of having a very strong uh, generic um, name as a, as a domain. Now, one thing I will clarify 
is pretty much all of those domains, unless you're really, really, really lucky, are gone. Now, they often are for sale in the aftermarket, and you can pick up some really good deals if you, you know, you do your research and you, you hunt around. There's, there's lots of different services that um, provide domain names that, um, that are for sale. Um, Cedo, S-E-D-O dot com is one of them. Uh, mm-hmm. But but you can buy these names, you, and you won't be getting them for $8. It could be hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions, as, as lots of the domain names are selling for recently. Um, yeah. And, and the, the pizza.com is an example of that. That uh, has been um, owned by one gentleman for, uh, since 1994. He bought it for $20, and he's kept it, and he just sold it uh, on auction uh, on cedo.com for $2.6 million. Now, that's not a bad return on his investment, I think. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. There's a, re- there's a retirement. Um, and someone else who owned the, the pizza.net decided, well, it was a good opportunity. There was lots of talk about the, the domain name pizza.com. I'll now sell my pizza.net uh, domain name. And last check, last night, it was just over a million dollars that it was on, on auction. And that's where dot .net. Yes. So the dot .net is sort of like the, the, the poorer cousin of the dot .com. Uh, it, was mm-hmm. very, it, was a very, it was a very popular uh, when the, the internet first got started. Um, uh, I mean, dot, dot .com is really associated with commerce and dot .net used to do with anything that was sort of network related or internet related. But, that, but that's really sort of gone by the way now and it's, uh, it's not quite so tightly associated as it was back then with those sorts of uh, that sort of information, but uh, you know, it's it's still a very very strong extension of dot, of .net. You know, it's fa- it's fascinating to learn that I didn't and I didn't know that that early on that they were giving away domain names early early on. So those you know of us that were around, not really paying attention to the domain name world, uh, mm-hmm. is, is quite something. I know when I first started purchasing domain names. I think the cost was for every domain name was thirty five bucks u s and you had to pay for two months minimum so it was it was a little cost prohibitive you didn't just go out and start buying up domain names just for the heck of it. you actually had to sit mm. down and think it through a little bit yeah absolutely I know my accountant uh, back then he'd actually he he had purchased a domain name he he bought business dot com and he sold it years ago for three point hey. two or three point three million bucks. Ah, he he bought it. Your accountant bought business dot com. Yeah, he bought that very early on. And he did, probably did you see what it was sold for about seven months ago? No. Three hundred and fifty million. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now there was to, to clarify that price, uh he so if he sold it back then, someone else bought it for uh, and and sold it to the company that just sold it recently. I think they sold it for about nine million. Now the company that bought it spent another uh, seventy million dollars building a whole infrastructure and business behind it. So it wasn't just the domain that went to three hundred and fifty. But if you took away all of the money they spent on it, uh, you know, even if it was a hundred million they spent on developing it, and they sold it for three hundred and fifty million. Um, Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So, <laughs> well, I remember when it happened here. It was big news around here, and uh, he was a pretty pretty smart guy. Probably still is. Uh, he used to he used to he used to uh, sell a service in the local newspapers where he would incorporate your company for ninety nine bucks plus the fees he had to pay to the government, and uh, that's the way he built up his accounting practice. Because of course, somebody starting a new business needed an accountant. So he had a, a thriving accounting business, and that's how I got to know him. And then he went and purchased the domain name, and I didn't even know he'd owned it until I seen it in the newspaper that he had just sold it. So I would imagine ah, uh, there you go. his retirement. Now, so. now, probably for most people, James, um, that's all very great that we're talking about these domain names that are selling for millions of dollars, but it's probably not going to help the listeners very, <laughs> very much that are on this call because um, unless... The, uh, unless some of them have three hundred fifty million dollars in their back pocket, then probably not. They're not going to go and buy business dot com. So I suppose it's a matter of giving them some information on what they can do to to help them with the purchase of a domain name if they're choosing to to go and get one, and how they can apply it to their to their business. Yes. 
Now, um, on that on that exact topic in the area, you know, of course, of affiliate marketing and internet marketing, and those of us who have businesses that are buying up domain names, what what exactly should they be looking at in, in that area? As far as first off, before we get into that, you're talking about the big prices. How do they actually? De- value how do they value these domain names is there a formula that they use or how would somebody know how would they know if they're sitting on a domain name that's actually worth some money uh that is an exceptionally good question without an exceptionally good answer (laughs) because uh sometimes i sell domain names that i don't think are necessarily worth a lot of money uh and the auction process uh someone else wants it so it really it a domain name is only worth as much as someone is prepared to pay for it ultimately, like anything that's, that's sold in the, in the auction world. Uh, and sometimes people who have their domain names who are selling them don't realise that they are worth more than, the, 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 than they think it is and they end up giving away for a, a, a lower price. Um, and it's, it, it really is hard to put an exact figure. There's no scientific calculation uh, for working out what a domain name is worth. Um, well, what are some the, of the things, though, some of the factors that would play into it? Of course, you mentioned um, the, sh- the shorter the domain name, the better. .com is yep. better than .net, .org, that type of thing. Anything else in that area? Yes, it's a case of the, the shorter, the better, the more generic, the better, uh, and potentially the more commercial um, potential, the better. Uh, so, like, for example... The, the company that bought uh, pizza.com, I'm not quite sure who that is yet. I haven't, uh, haven't heard, uh, from my, from my um, information, it was one of the big three pizza companies, Pizza Hut or Domino's or one, someone else. Um, now, they would just be using that domain as, as bringing type-in traffic through to their main, their main business. Yes. Um, and, or maybe routing it through somewhere else. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out in the future what happens there. But really, if, if you look at a domain name and if you, one of the, the ways to go and see how popular it is is if you go to the Google search page or if you use the Google uh, uh, toolbar on your browser, just type in a domain name and make sure you use the quotation marks around the name or it can be a one, it can be a one word uh, keyword or it can be two or three, wor- three words with the spaces just as you would okay. normally type in at the search. Okay. And, and put the, uh, the quotation marks because that will only display that exact combination of of keywords. So, say for example, we looked in, uh, uh, we were looking up um, uh, domain names, just just that word itself. Okay. What that will then do is display how many uh, websites on the internet actually show uh, that that combination of, of keywords on their page, and it will say, look, there's, there's fifteen thousand, a hundred thousand, two million. Uh, so, so really, the more sites that have your keyword or phrase sh- showing up uh, on their site, then you've got a better chance of it being of, of higher value because it's, it's commonly used by people. Um, now, uh, that's just one little way just to get an idea on how popular a, a keyword is. Another way is to use the, the free tools um, like Keyword Discovery or Word Tracker. Yes. Um, uh, we can we can get the links for people for that. So I don't have them in front of me at the moment. But mm-hmm. um, even if, even if you just went to uh, wordtracker.com, they, they they they've got the link on there. I think for the for the free uh, free service, and that'll that'll give you an idea on on a monthly basis how many people if you type that phrase into Word Tracker, how many people are searching for it on a monthly basis. Um, oh, sorry, on a daily basis for the Word Tracker and Keyword Discovery shows it on a on a monthly basis. Now, if I, I, I generally tend to work on uh, with keyword discovery. If there's more than a thousand people a month searching for a, a keyword or phrase, then it has, you know, it has potential. Um, uh, again, it, it comes down to if you're looking at registering a domain name purely trying to get people uh, using it for type-in traffic, that's going to be a lot harder because they're, they're fewer, as I said before. But if you get a good quality domain name, and it, it may be a, what we call a longer tail domain name, so it's going to have two or three, or I mean, I, I would probably, you know, I would try and keep the amount of uh, letters in the domain name under 20. 15 okay. is preferable, and that's not including the .com okay. or, the, or the extension or the .net, uh, because the longer it is, 
um, the harder it is for people to remember what it is. Okay. Um, and it needs it needs to make it needs to make sense. So it needs to be a, a, a naturally searched on phrase that that is commonly being put into Google. So a domain name. So when we're looking at domain names, uh, you know some of the obviously good ones. You know the easy ones. When you say shorter the better, generic, uh, have some commercial appeal. You know a great domain name would be creditcard.com. Absolutely. Absolutely, and you know that's that's a, a perfect example. Credit card, credit cards, um, any, anything or anything of that sort of ilk is 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 valuable. The one of the good domain names that, that you can possibly still get these days are, are domains. If you're doing reviews on certain products or services, like so, if you if you got um, credit card reviews, now that'll probably go on. I'm, I'm pretty good, pretty good at guessing what's gone these days, but <laughs> yeah. um, but that's an example. Or it could be something in your niche niche uh, subject area with the word review or reviews on the end, if that's what you're planning to do. Um, now that may not necessarily get searched on a huge amount, but uh, if you have a domain name that has a strong keyword uh, relevance to it, then that's going to help with your search engine optimization as you've been teaching for all these years. Um, e- even if the even if the keywords have common, uh, that is potentially good for the search engines. You won't get any probably practically no type in traffic at all or direct navigation because it's very unlikely that people are going to type in uh, credit hyphen cards hyphen reviews dot com as a naturally searched on um, uh, direct navigation. So you know you probably want to. Uh, not register domains with hyphens if you can if you can avoid it. But if it's only for the purposes of search engine optimization, uh, it's still completely and utterly fine. You know, one one of the things that we've been doing over the last, I would say, uh, probably 18 months, and it was actually Phil Watkins' idea. It was kind of br- approached me with, and I thought it was a brilliant idea. Uh, and, and that is to what he called box in your domain names. And this really applies to us as affiliates and to, I guess, any business owner who is wanting to protect themselves from their competitors. And I, I've had this happen over the years where I would register a domain name and then all of a sudden my competition would register uh, you know, half a dozen domain names that are very similar to my mm-hmm. own domain. So what we've been doing for quite some time, Arlene just did it with her site. She just built a website called epilepsymoms.com. And the first thing we did was register the .com, the .net, the .org, and epilepsy-moms.com. Just to kind of box in the domain names around it so the next person coming down the pipe that wants to compete with her, they can, but they're not going to be able to use a similar domain name. Yes, excellent idea. And look, that, it's a very, very viable thing to do. If if you're only focusing on a couple of uh, a couple of projects and a couple of domain names, uh, then that is definitely the thing to do. And that's that's a, a wise move. Just removes that that chance. One, one thing I will say to people is, if you're going to be spending a lot of time and a lot of money developing a website, and w- what I'll go through in just a sec is just a, a few variations of what domainers are and what they do. Um, to, because there's different levels of, of domainers in the entry. Um, one, one of the things, just to make sure that if you're going to spend a lot of time and money developing a domain, make sure it's a .com. Or, or the next minimum best is make sure it's what they call a CCTLD, which is a country code top-level domain. Now, a normal top-level domain is a .com, a .net, a .info, a .biz. Um, so, but... If, if you're spending all this time and money to, to build up a site, really work on the .com if you can get if you can get it, uh, because all you'll be doing if you build up a really strongly branded uh, um, site and people know it, then the, potentially if you've got a .net rather than a .com, the person that owns mm-hmm. the .com is going to be benefiting from people type, going back to that site sometime in the future, remembering that name, but they've just automatically stuck the .com in front of it. Now, yeah, but that's a fact. Country, with the I actually, country code, I, 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 uh, sorry, go ahead. No, no you, that's okay. No, I was going to say, I have that happen to me on one of my sites. Uh, I've got the website called talk.ca, 
And I'll yes. tell somebody to go to talk.ca, and I'll get an email back from them. You know, I went to your site, and I couldn't get through. I couldn't find it. And they says, I, I went, and I typed in talk.ca.com, and I, I can't find it. Yeah. And I don't know why it is, but they just happened to tack on that little .com on the end of it, and that kind of uh, doesn't work. It's 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 10 years of um, Madison Avenue branding. That's what it is. The, the .com has had literally billions of dollars put behind it in marketing. Uh, so the, the .com is really, for, for most people, particularly Americans and, and probably Canadians as well, any North Americans would uh, would think of the .com as, as their extension, even though there's .us these days, which is, hasn't really taken off, but the .com is, is the one, it's the king of the domain names. But in, in what I was saying before with the country extensions, like, for example, I'm in Australia. So our main domain extension uh, is .com.au, now, most people in Australia, if they were typing in a domain name, probably a very high percentage, would type in .com.au rather than uh, .com. Not always the case, but it, it's related to for our country. And I own a lot of uh, .co.uk domain names for the same reason. They, they tend to think that because it's their country code extension that it would be more relevant uh, to what they're looking for rather than typing .com. So, you know, there's always the king, and .com is the king, but there's also the queens and the, the uh, uh, what's the other one in card pack? I forgot, I don't play paper, obviously. <laughs> what's, the, what's the next one there? I've when, forgotten. When, yeah. When somebody's looking, you know, to, to pick a domain name, one of the things I like to do, I, I'm a fan of getting the keyword in there uh, for some of the search engine uh, benefits that you can get. I don't necessarily so much go with the dashes anymore, although I do like to get the dash version so I have it and then if I want to uh, uh, publish it, sometimes I've got it so nobody else can get it. Yes. I also find that, you know, it's amazing how many times I, I, I want to go register a domain name and you realize that you know, I assume that it wouldn't be there. We're sitting there talking with uh, Charles Johnson, host of the Affiliate Buzz, and we're looking to come up with a domain name for a site where we were working on for the boot camp. And mm -hmm. he says, well, why don't you register freevideolesson.com? And I'm thinking, there's no way freevideolesson.com is going to be available. So I went and did a search. Sure enough, it's available. I registered the .com, the .net, the .org, and the dashes, dash version of it as well. So... It was a good lesson to me that there's we I had a tendency to think you know all of the great domain names are gone and that's not for what we were wanting to use it for it was the perfect name. Yes, yeah, and and so, that is the thing to remember. Just just because a lot of the the prime premium single word or or two word domain names have, have already been snatched up, it doesn't mean that you still cannot register a. And when, and when I call a new registration, something that hasn't been registered before, or maybe the domain that has been registered and has been dropped, which is something, and I've picked up a lot of those. That there's a, there's a, uh, a, a company or a, a website called um, dropnames.com. Uh, what was um, it called? Dropped Names or, dropped. or Name Drop. Hang on, I have to, I have to double check that. Bear, bear with okay. me a sec, I'll come back to you on that one. Uh, but there, there, are, and there are several companies out there that provide lists of... Um, uh, of domain names that have that have uh, come back to the place, but uh, again, never 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 assume that it's not available. Go and go and use uh, your domain registrar. I mean, GoDaddy.com is perfectly fine, or or Namecheap.com. Any any of those registrars um, will, will tell you whether it's available or not. Um, and if it is, hey, go and grab it if it's if it's relevant to what you're wanting to do. Um, but yeah, it's very very important to try and take the other uh, the others off the market as well. So, the uh, I know when we were looking to register a uh, domain name for uh, my new kit car site, probably I guess getting onto a year ago now already, or maybe eight to ten months ago. We're trying to sit down and come up with uh, ideas for uh, the domain name for that website, and I started looking at the obvious stuff, kitcars.com, and of course all of that stuff is gone. And then uh, Arlene, uh, she's she's actually quite my wife. She's brilliant at, at picking out domain names. So she says, "Why don't you get KitCarConnection.com?" That's a good one. As soon as she said it, I loved it, and uh, it was it was available. So why don't you talk for a second, if you could, about getting a keyword 
into the domain name for the topic. Again, her other website, epilepsymoms.com. It's nice to have for a variety of reasons, and maybe you could touch on it, a variety of reasons why it can be beneficial, Maybe, and we could cross over to the paid uh, topic for a minute with paid results over at Google AdWords. But what are some of the advantages of getting the keyword phrase, or at least one of the words in the domain, like epilepsy moms? Okay. Well, if if you are a mother or a father even, and you are searching for something to do with epilepsy regarding your ch- your children, if you went to that or you saw that domain name, would it resonate with you? Would it make sense? I mean, if if I if I searched on something of the, of that ilk and ended up on on uh, 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 um, Mary Jo's site dot com or you know something that okay the, the subject matter underlying the domain was the same, but if the domain name didn't reflect anything to do with what they were searching on, there's a very good chance they didn't put any attention. So if you can somehow uh, incorporate that keyword rich and uh, phrase into the domain, then it's just going to make sense when people look at the look at the name, look at the site and think, okay, this is the subject matter that I've been looking, looking for. So it, it's, it's a common sense thing, but a lot of people just they don't really understand the association with the name and with the subject that it, it's important to try and match them up. Uh, and that, that goes with the paid advertising that you were just mentioning. Um, if, if it's very, very, very important, uh, in particular with something like Google AdWords, if you're trying to uh, advertise a site, that the, the stronger the name is of that site because it's displayed the URL web address on, on the advert, um, the better chance you have, and usually you'll get what's known as a higher click-through rate, so more people clicking on the ad quite often can can purely be a factor of the fact that the, the, the domain name makes sense and, and is very closely related to, or if not the same as the keyword phrase that just typed in. Now, um, if, if everyone wants to go, does it? Um, you can all still hear me, I'm assuming? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So sometimes it goes quiet and I'm not sure whether I've disappeared or not. I'm a bit paranoid <laughs> because I'm on, I'm on Skype using, we're using technology here, so... Um, it, one of the one of the places to go to and have a look is the one I was trying to remember before is Snap Name. So S N A P N A M E S dot com, and that has a very good um, aftermarket system. Um, uh, they have auctions and all sorts of stuff happening there. Now, okay. if you go, if everyone goes to that main page at snapnames.com, dot com, you'll see down the bottom there's a, what they have a list of featured domains. One of the one of the tests that I always have, and I and I speak to a lot of my friends and, and business associates quite often before I register a, a domain name, unless it's really really obvious that it's a good one. But I'll say to them, what do you think this website is about? And if they can't tell me straight off the bat what the website's about just from knowing the domain name, then I won't yeah. register the domain name. Um, okay, here's an example: currencyvalues.net. Okay, that's pretty obvious what that's about. Currency yep. values. Paymentcalculators.net. Yep. Uh, discount NY Hotel. Um, free me- uh, free, me- free yeah. Medicare cards. Free Medicare cards, you know? So, I mean, you can see what I'm saying now by the, the fact that the domain name makes sense. Uh, and you can look at it and pretty much know what it is. Healthpractitioners.org. Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Now, one of the things to keep in mind, because um, a lot of people may be used to looking and using the Overture uh, keyword suggestion tool uh, mm-hmm. or using or using goodkeywords.com, the, 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 the software you can download that extracts that information from Overture, quite often the keyword phrases that you'll no doubt notice, James, they get mixed up in, in Overture. They... they, they Back to front, or you know, the word that should be at the front is in the middle. Have you have yep. you noticed that? Yep, all the time. Now that is a trap that people that don't understand that. If if, if you're reading that phrase and it doesn't make sense in Overture, just just be careful and double check that that is the correct layout of that phrase, because a lot of people go and register that thinking that that is the, is is the phrase, and they've got a a domain name with two or three words in it that doesn't really make sense. So just a little tip there to be careful. So you, you would getting recommend it. staying away from those? Yeah, or, or just at least double-checking them. If, if, you're, if you've got the list and the... Um, or here's one off this list that we could say... Um, okay, debt collection lawyer. 
for example, that might be debt lawyer collection. That, that's right. how it might read on Overture. So you think debt lawyer collection, that doesn't quite, it's probably debt collection lawyer. You know what I'm saying? So there's, mm-hmm. there's a little bit of common sense required and then just think, okay, I'll just double check that phrase in something like uh, the, the free uh, word tracker tool or, or or good keywords tool to make sure that the phrase is correct and, and, and put it into the Google search bar as well. So I notice, uh, you know, when we're out there looking for domain names, I personally always go over to Domain Maniac or one in onecom and start mm-hmm. typing in potential domain names for the topic that I'm looking at. I really never considered heading over to a company like snapnames.com to find domain names that are for sale. So this is yes. uh, something, you know, that's just not that I haven't done. Typically, because I'm a little cheap, but I'm I'm quite surprised these prices for some of these domain names. You know, they're for somebody that's just getting started that may not have a little bit of a budget. There might be a little bit, but there's some pretty good domain names here that aren't that much money. Like companyfundraiser.com. That's a pretty nice little domain name that's for sale. Absolutely, and a, a you know a fantastic website could be built. And 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 that is one of you know there's there's heaps of companies like this the snap names they're not the only one um, there, there's a whole host of them out there but this is so probably, you did a Google search for them. domain names for sale or what would what would the keyword phrase be where we would find um, type of sites? you could search uh, probably dropped names or keyword or domain name auctions um, any expired any expired domain that, names expired domain names yep. Um, you know, any of any of those, and th- these would be good domain names for sites that probably already exist. So it's a good example. Um, <laughs> so any of those. Now, one of the main companies that will probably the biggest that has an aftermarket um, is Cedo. So S E D O dot com. So S E D O dot com. They okay. are uh, they are. Now we haven't even touched on 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 this, but we'll, we'll go there in, in a sec. They they also uh, what is called a parking company. Now they you can put then put your name on there for sale. You can buy names from them, or you can park your domain name. Now parking a domain name is a way of monetizing a domain name. In particular, it is effective and probably really only effective for domains that have direct navigation or typing traffic. So um, if you're someone that has Dozens of domain names that you own. You obviously can't develop them all uh, and build a website around them per se uh, straight away. You know, it takes time and effort to, to do that. So if you have lots of domain names that have potential, and some some people listening to this may have had domain names that have registered for years that they've done nothing with, they may may be able to get some revenue from it by simply choosing a parking company, um, which is like cedo.com or parked.com, P-A-R-K-E-D.com. Okay. Uh, NameDrive.com is another one. They're some of the ones that I use. And what all you have to do is uh, point your domain name or the, the domain name setting or domain name system to this particular parking company. Um, and what happens is any direct navigation traffic that comes through from people typing it into the browser bar and going to that page, they have ads displayed similar to Google uh, you know, uh, AdSense ads or Yahoo yeah. ads. And uh, what they do is display those ads for you and usually you can control some of the background information on the page, like the keywords and the meta tags and um, pictures and stuff like that. So uh, someone will go to that page, they'll click on an ad and you will get it from, from those clicks. The parking company keeps on average between 25 to, to 40%, depending on who okay. you're using, and, and you get the rest. Now, that, that's a simple way. If you've got a good domain name that gets a lot of traffic that you don't have time to do anything with, rather than just leaving it parked at your domain registrar and not making yourself any money, probably only benefiting the, the, the registrar company, you can actually point it to these parking companies. Money uh, potentially will come into you from, from the advertising, and at least, at least hopefully they are, it's washing its face for its registration every year of you know, 6 or 8 or $10, however much you're paying. You know, that's a, that's a good point. So what you're saying, just so let me go back with you on that just to make sure I understand. You're saying if you've got domain names that are hanging around, you're not really doing anything with them, and they you think they've got the potential for type-in traffic, meaning somebody's just going to go to their browser and type in a keyword phrase in their browser, 
Yes. What you're saying is take your domain name, point the DNS, which is the domain name server, and you do this within your domain uh, registration account where you've registered that domain name, point it to SEDO, right. for example, S-E-D-O.com. They will put up a page for you on that domain name. Now, anytime somebody lands on that particular page, however they get there, and if they click on, for example, the Google ad, you're going to earn 75% or they're going to take a little piece and you're going to earn the, the, the majority of it. So, and Correct. so this is the way that you can monetize domains that you're not currently doing anything with. Yes, and ju and just to be clear there, they're, they're usually very strict with their policies. They don't allow uh, domain uh, arbitrage in the sense of uh, you parking your domain name with them and then uh, doing things like Google AdWords or paid search directing traffic through to that page. They only yeah. allow it to come from uh, natural type-in traffic. Uh, or in some cases, if there's links from other other sites pointing to that page, that's fine as well. So you just need okay. to check the check their conditions, uh, and that, that they all vary from time to time. But most of them won't let you actually do any paid advertising. This is purely for direct navigation. Um, okay. But look, it's a it's a yes, it's an excellent way of of taking advantage of your thing um, rather than sitting there doing nothing. Yeah. You know, another another interesting thing on the topic of domain names that, you know, I did early on, and there's probably a good recommendation, too, and maybe you've done it as well, but I went and registered when they were still available, I don't know, five or six, seven, eight years ago, all of the names of my kids, our kids, Shelby Martell, yes, yes. Adam Martell, Justin Martell, Victoria Martell, all the dot-coms. I didn't do the dot-nets and all those, because I figured there is only one adammartell.com. There is only one justinmartell.com. Yes. Although we haven't done anything with them. I renew them every year because yep. eventually they're going to want their own names. And they're, you know, if they're not available, they'll probably never get them. What a great dad you are. <laughs> well, they may have no, to buy them off me. I didn't say I was going to give them to them for free. <laughs> <laughs> that's, no, that's, but that is a, that is a really, really good thing to do. And, um, if you haven't already done it, if it, if your name is not a common name, then you've got a good chance of still getting it. Uh, go and register your your own name um, because it's you know it's a it's a hey it's you own the, own yourself. <laughs> absolutely. One of the things you know I've, I've, I'm curious. I've got a domain name that I registered quite a number of years ago, and I'm wondering if it would actually be worth anything. It's a four letter dot com. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really say anything. It's NSLD. What, what about a domain name like that? Uh, okay. Um, quite regularly, uh, there, there's been a huge uh, play on um, just mixed letter or uh, mixed letter domain names. They call them LLL or LLLL if you've got four. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, quite regularly, the three letter ones, because um, they're all gone, you can't get them. There's obviously none left. Uh, they've been selling for between thirty and forty thousand dollars. Now, the the four letter domain names, regardless of whether it makes sense or not, because it could be a company initial. I mean, you've got a more more chance of of a of a three letter domain name being a, you know a, a company initial. Um, give me an example. Well, I can give you lots of Australian ones, like um, like NAB, for example, is National Australia Bank. Okay. Um, so you know you can think of uh, uh, like the IBM. IBM, yeah, IBM Classic. Okay, now that could be a case with you, James. I mean, that domain name I would say would, would be worth would probably worth thousands of dollars. I mean, I'm not okay. going to speculate on it. The only way you're going to know is to put it in a an, in an auction system uh, and find out. Um, but I would be very surprised if you if you didn't get several thousand dollars for that domain name. I would personally just hang on to it, um, <laughs> unless you're really desperate for the money. No. Uh, you know, over time, it'll just it'll just you know become more and more. So, so good good job. There you go. Neat. Cool. Well, I'm was, just curious. Was, I'm wondering how many people that are listening live to us tonight or as a recording have domain names that they're you know that may be worth a few grand or more. Oh, abs abs absolutely. Well, the gentleman that just sold pizza.com, I mean, I think from memory, uh, don't quote me on this, but from my understanding, that was the only domain name that he really had. 
Um, and he just kept renewing it, and he ended up building a site around it uh, as as time went on, a sort of an, an information site on pizzas, um, and it had links to different pizza companies and services, etc. So he was, you know, he, he had monetized it in that sense. But uh, a, a lot of people have domain names that they really don't understand the value of, and and this is what a lot of domainers like myself do: is if they're looking for a particular domain name. Uh, you can look up on the, the who is and the, the who is who is service basically just provides the information on uh, who registered that domain name and, and when it was registered. Uh, quite often that information is blocked. You can pay to have it so that people can't find out who you are and where you are and what your phone number is. But yes. more often than not, people not in the know will register the domain name, keep uh, um, paying for the registration renewal every year. Yeah. And they don't necessarily understand that they've got a domain name that could be worth, you know, X thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, and quite often they'll get phone calls from people who do know and, and have offers put to them. And, like, you know, if someone phoned, phoned you up and you had a domain name that you'd be paying $10 a year for for years and you really didn't want to do anything with it and you didn't understand domains uh, and someone offered you $50,000 for it, a lot of people go, hey, cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, okay. You know, but that. That, that domain name you know, might be worth uh, you know, hundreds of thousands on the open market if it's marketed correctly and, and you know, put into the proper system uh, and exposed to the right people. Um, some people might say that's a dishonest thing to do, but I suppose it's business and um, if one person's happy and to sell the domain and that's you know, what they're prepared to pay for it, then uh, hey, great. Absolutely. So, it, yeah, so look, it, it's a case of... Um, there's another really good domain aftermarket service that GoDaddy has. Um, and so if you go to GoDaddy, it, sh- it should be on there. I think they call it the... Uh, um, let me just look that one up. Uh, I think it's called the Domain Name Aftermarket. Uh, domain. You know, it's funny. I'm looking through my domain names, and I probably have more than 200 for sure. I got some pretty cool ones in here. i got to say moviehotlines.com. I've owned that for... You know, it's not creditcards.com, but that's a fun little name. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a, that's a good name. Um, yeah, the domain name aftermarket is, is what it's called. And if you just go into the GoDaddy uh, website, or you can go to tdnam.com, so that's T for Tom, D for Donald, N for Nelly, A for Apple, M for Mary.com. TDNAM.com, and that will take you to uh, GoDaddy's domain name aftermarket system. Uh, and they have a whole stack of keywords, uh, uh, sorry, uh, domain names that are up for sale, and you know, they have the live running auction. It's very similar to eBay's type setup, and they've got how many hours or days are left on the auction, how many bids have been put on there, the current price. Um, so, you know, this, that's, a, that's a very popular. Uh, a domain aftermarket. So, so if somebody's sitting it. sitting yeah. on a domain name, and they are curious and wondering what it's worth, they could go to. Let me just get that again. Tdnam. dot com. dot com. Correct. And what do they, what do they do when they get there? Do they set up an account? Uh, you open, what, you the open an account. Uh, most most of the companies I, I I set mine up ages ago. I can't actually remember whether it crossed anything. They're either free to set up or minimum, you know, might be a you know, token five or ten dollars to set up an account uh, with them. Uh, and then it's just a case of listing the domain name. They'll probably ask you to put in some information about what the domain potential is or what it's related to. Uh, and they'll ask for a, a price that you want to sell it for. And you can also put in a reserve price like any other sort of auction system. Uh, yep. So at least if it doesn't get to your your price point, you know, and then you know you've, you've lost nothing in it. And, and, you can reassess it down the track and put it back up for auction again. Um, and I'm looking at one now, toybuilders.com. You know, that's up to sale for $50,000. Now, when, when you really consider it, and again, it comes back to the thing that you were talking about before with your, with your kids' names, there is only one jamesmartell.com available, okay? There is only one toybuilders.com available. Um, so... It's, it's one of those things, people will go and spend, you know, a hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand, a million dollars on a piece of real estate, but right next to that other, that piece of real estate, quite often there's 
something that's almost identical. Um, so, I mean, ultimately, when you look at domain names, and it's, the domains are commonly referred to as virtual real estate or yeah. cyber real estate, um, you know, it, it's a once-off piece of property. You, no one else can own that domain name. They can have something similar. They can have the .net or the .org, um, but they will never have the .com as long as you keep paying your registration fee. Um, yeah. And so, you know, it's prime, prime real estate. Prime real estate. What's the difference in price typically between, uh, you know, a .com and a .net? I have another domain name called HowItWorks.net. What would what would and you're probably going to have to completely guess what would the difference between a howitworks.com and a howitworks.net what would the difference be is it half as valuable or a quarter well you know that is that is a really hard question and at the moment there's there's something that's completely sort of blowing any of the normal way of thinking out the out the door and that's the pizza double. Um, I would never have thought that pizza.net would be selling for over a million dollars. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what the current price is at the moment. I haven't checked it since sort of 24 hours ago. Uh, I mean, .com sold for 2.6 and .net is at over 1 million. So I mean, you know, it's more than one third the price of the .com. Now, quite often, uh, quite often numbers are bandied around for a, a .net being sort of, you know, um, one sixth the value, or one you know one fifth the value of a dot com, but it's really open to speculation. And uh, you know, some people are really quite happy to get the dot net and develop a dot net if as long, if if the keywords in that um, domain are exactly what they want. So I own quite a lot of quite a lot of dot nets. Like um, uh, I own uh, travelbytrain.net, dot uh, net, which is one that I'm developing that's, now. That's a nice one. Yeah, and that was one that, that was uh, had been registered and had dropped, and I and I picked that one up, and um, that's something I'll be de- we'll be doing a lot of train travelling <laughs> while we're away, and that's the side <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, that I'm going to dedicate to travelling by train around Europe and UK and America or Canada. So I, I don't mind the fact that I know that .dot com is already gone uh, because I'm, I'll be using my my sort of search engine uh, expertise and my paid advertising stuff and. I'll be bringing the traffic into it in many ways, so um, I'm not really concerned that the .com has been taken. For a, a, a large company, I would probably reassess just buying the .net um, as opposed to the, to the .com. So, so I don't know whether I answered that question. Maybe I did a politician job and sort of skirted around it and uh, didn't answer it at all. <laughs> no, I think you did. The, uh, we had a conversation when we talked to, you know, a few days ago. You'd mentioned that uh, there's some overlap here between what we do in the affiliate marketing world and the you know, publishing of websites and the domainers who are sitting on domain names. And sometimes it's worthwhile, you know, taking that domain name and, of course, building a website with it. Yeah, and look, that's a, a very good segue into the, what I was going to talk about in, in regards to the type of domainers there are. And I'll, I'll just very quickly touch on the different types of domainers and what they do. First of all, you've got the investor, and the investor is someone who will buy a domain name and hold that for the long term. Um, very rarely will they, will they sell it, uh, but usually they're buying that domain name to keep for five or ten years and, and sort of profit from it in the long run. Then you've got someone that is. These aren't in, these aren't industry names, by the way. This sort of it's terms we use in the domain name industry fairly regularly. But then you've got someone that they call uh, a flipper. So someone who'll who'll buy a domain name today for a hundred bucks and sell it in uh, you know a month's time or next week for two hundred dollars and just make quick little profits consistently like that. Um, okay. Then you've got someone who's a developer who will buy a, a domain name and. Um, they'll, they'll buy unregistered domain names and build, you know, uh, uh, properties on there. They might take, take a domain name that had no, no really huge value. It might have, you know, be worth 10 or 15 or 20 dollars. Uh, they'll put some content on that site, develop it, have some, have some, uh, Google AdSense and some advertising or, and that particular site, they may sell four or five months down the track for 5,000, 10,000 dollars because they've actually built the value around that domain, they've got traffic to the site. Um, 
So, you know, they're, they're really the, the, the common areas of what people do as, as domainers. So it's, it's really a case of choosing. You know, you, you may fit in there somewhere. You may be a blend of all of those types of people. I mean, obviously with the things that you've been teaching, James, over the years, um, they would probably be into more of the development stage or the development category um, where they're buying a domain name, you know, getting traffic to it, putting affiliate links on, uh, Google AdSense, etc. Yes. You know, it's a good point. It's one of those things that I don't think a lot of people really sit down and think about, which is how much would your site be worth once, or what will it be worth once you've built it out? And I know yeah, and, and so, so eBay, eBay is a common, also a common place where domain names are, are sold, and most people probably wouldn't even think of eBay as a place to buy a domain name. Um, but yeah, regularly domains are sold on there, and and quite often uh, people in particular that have sites that have uh, something built around them, and it's not just a domain name that is parked somewhere. Um, you know, they'll they'll market that the site on eBay and and uh, talk about you know the, how the site's been developed and how much traffic it gets and all sorts of information like that you know, relating to that developed name. I'd actually, I received a call from a guy I know locally here in Vancouver. I guess it would be a week ago tomorrow. And he's waiting to get back to me to get back to him on a few of them. But he's out there actively, uh, I guess you would, you, what you, you call them as developers. And he approached me to buy a, a few of my sites that I'm not doing too much with. And, right. Which was interesting because he was throwing, I, I was curious as to see what they would be worth. And he said mm-hmm. the site that is making, he says, for example, if it's making only ten bucks a day in Google AdSense, they'll cut a check yep. right now for ten times three hundred and sixty five days. So thirty six hundred and fifty bucks. If mm-hmm. they're if if you've got a site that's earning a thousand sorry, a hundred bucks a day, they'd cut a check for thirty six grand just like n- no question about it, right now. Yeah, yeah, and that that's quite quite common. The 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 ten X factor is uh is quite common. You'll find that it's probably um, more often than not anywhere between five and ten. But but yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good ballpark figure to, to work with. Um, because really, you know, the site's already there. It's developed. The traffic's coming in. Um, it's you know, it's income that they're going to be making potentially for many years to come, uh, as long as they obviously keep the site up and keep the content up. You bet. You mentioned you mentioned earlier. Uh, trademarks um, as far as goes to domain names. So maybe we could talk about this for uh, a few minutes because I know this is a mistake I made a long time ago, one of the many I've made over the years, having fun with this. And But it was mm-hmm. kind of a cool, it was a cool mistake and I, you know, it was an interesting exercise. And I'd registered back then, I registered a domain name, you know, completely innocently. Here I am an affiliate. I'm representing Capital One Visa, and I'm marketing cars. I got great search results, and I registered the domain name Capital One Visa dot net because obviously they had the dot com. And then yes. I went to work on getting that site developed and built out, and put the content on it. And then I started working on getting the uh, traffic to the site, and pu- managed to push it up into the number one position, knocking Capital One Visa dot com. Out of number one yep. to number two, and I got the number one spot. And I was quite proud of my stuff, and I thought they would appreciate that because, goodness knows, I'm sending them all this business, and they're paying me a commission, so this must be a pretty good thing. Yeah, uh, one would think that. <laughs> right up until the point I got the cease and desist letter from their legal team out of New York. <laughs> then I realized that this probably wasn't the coolest thing to do. But it, you know what? It's yeah, a very common and innocent mistake for some of us that are maybe not that savvy to the trademarking rules and the copyright issues especially uh, early on. Yeah. What yeah, can you done say it, to that? I've done it, done it myself. <laughs> other than just happen. not do it. <laughs> I've got nothing else to say other than don't do it. <laughs> just don't do it. No, no, I'm serious. Just It's not worth it. Because not only you, – you, you were very lucky – because if uh, if you really do your research, and I'm I'm putting a disclaimer up here, I'm not a legal expert, so you know, seek legal guidance from uh, someone before you action any of what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> um, 
in particular, uh, the United States, as we know, is, is quite high with the litigation side of things these days. Yes, uh, and the, the rest of the world, the rest of the world is following rapidly, and down under we're not sure. Um, and you got off lightly. How long ago did that happen that you got the, the cease and desist? Or you know, it was oh, a few that years would ago. have been 2002. Okay. Well, well, nowadays, what is happening is that you're, you're getting that letter, plus you're getting sued for $100,000 for loss of income because they didn't have that domain name or you're using their domain name. Um, so, no, there's, there's, there's really no other answer to do not do it <laughs> because it's not worth it. Um, do, do your due diligence because sometimes if you think you're registering a, uh, a phrase that Oh yeah, that's generic. Oh, yeah, no one has that. Um, go to the trademark uh, research places. I, I don't know the um, domains. I don't don't have them at, at my fingertips. Sorry, but if you if you do a search on or on just like you know, trademark search, or go to uh, the uh, USA.gov site. This I've probably got a link on there for trademark. Okay. Okay. But make just make sure from where, however you find out, make sure that the, that particular phrase or word or whatever it is is not trademark or trademark pending or whatever it is, uh, because it's just it isn't worth it. It is not worth going down the process of even coming close um, to upsetting uh, a company that has a trademark, um, because you know, they'll end up uh, giving you world of grief and you have to spend money to. You know, try and defend it if you if you thought it was defendable, uh, and yeah, no. Yeah, no here ended good the advice. here ended here ended the lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, somebody mentioned to me today. Well, Fer- FerrariKitCars.com is available, and well, yeah, I'm sure it is. But no, we're not. I don't want anything with the name <laughs> Ferrari in in my domain name. Thanks. No, no. Your it's yeah, your name. Get old Enzo giving us a call. And I'd love to meet yeah, him, that's just not in that context. Yeah, I think he's actually dead now, isn't he? But anyway, <laughs> if, 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 he'd probably still contact you from the grave. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he's going to be back. I I want my name man back. If you've back to him now. One of his sons, Dino, or... <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, so look, if you're looking at just general uh, generic domain names, you'll you'll be safe. And there's, there's so many of them out there, and there's a gazillion. I... Mean, I, I Constantly register new domain names every day. Unregistered domain names that haven't been um, uh, picked up. Like today, I registered uh, handtrolleys.com. Now, yeah. that may not necessarily be. A, I don't know whether you do you know what a hand trolley is. Mm, is it a dolly? Um, would, yeah, that's something yeah, you would it, use it, to move furniture and boxes. Correct. The moving van. Correct. It, that's exactly it. I don't think the phrase is that common in uh, in America and in uh, in Canada, but it's a, it's a phrase that's commonly used in the UK and Australia. We call them hand trolleys. Okay. So, um, so you know, it was a domain that was unregistered that has has great potential for a, a site on hand trolleys uh, and affiliate related products. And hey, I couldn't resist. Um, I've become addicted to registering domain names. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a pretty fun business. I mean, you know, I'm looking through that tdnam.com site, mm-hmm. and I'm seeing problems here with, you know, that people could potentially run into just on this topic of trademarks. Traveldisney.net. I'd avoid yeah, that, like the plague. Ab- yeah, absolutely. You don't um, want Mickey I- Mouse calling you, and he will. I personally think a lot of the parking companies and a lot of the uh, aftermarket domain name companies have a lot to answer for. I, I think that they should not even let domain names like that, uh, if, they're, if they're potential trademark infringement, infringements, be sold because, you know, some poor person is going to come along unknowingly or unwittingly buy that domain name and they're the, then they're the ones that are stuck with the, with the loss. So, um, yeah, that's just my personal opinion there. But Yeah, yeah but yeah, that's, that's a classic it. example of one I would, wouldn't touch with a large bowl. So, uh, here's another one. New York Giants, Super Bowl champs. I'd stay away from that. Yeah, yeah, New York Giants. Yeah, it's all yeah. <laughs> now here's here's a funny story. Here's a funny story for you. Uh, about four months ago, um, at one of the big domain name auctions uh, run by Moniker.com, it's M-O-N-I-K-E-R.com, Moniker. 
Okay. Uh, they uh, were at one of the travel, uh, sorry, at one of the traffic domain seminars. There's a, there's a seminar that's held in several places in the US, in Miami, New York, um, Las Vegas. And it's called Traffic. Um, and it's, they had a domain name option up for the domain cowboys.com. Now, there were lots of people bidding on this name, and uh, as you would expect, you know, Dallas Cowboys were bidding on the domain name as well. Now, it ended up selling for $275,000, and it was bought by Dallas Cowboys. Ten minutes or so after the domain name auction had finished and the Cowboys had purchased the name, one of the lawyers from Dallas Cowboys called back and said to them, there's been a mistake we didn't realise that we were paying that price for the domain name. We thought we were paying $275 for the domain name. <laughs> and everyone was going, oh, you've got to be kidding me. I mean, it cost $300 to participate in the auction. So, I mean, yeah. you know, a so one-word domain name. So, you think they just didn't understand what it was worth? They didn't understand, and they, they didn't want to didn't want to buy it tools that they were, in my opinion. Uh, so it went back on the auction the next day and ended up selling for $375,000. Uh, $375, um, and it was, bought, it was bought by a syndicate of, uh, of several domainers. Now, that's a classic example of a company not understanding the power of having a generic domain name. Necessary. Don't, don't misquote me here in this regard or misunderstand me, I should say. It is not necessary to have a good domain name to have a good website. Uh, look at companies like YouTube or, you know, and look how massive those companies are that are all bought by Google now. Google, I mean, it's not a generic phrase. Um, they've built up branding and they've built a business based on just the popularity of their product and service. So the domain name is not the critical factor in having a successful web business. Just wanted to make that clear. But it's yeah. very very, very powerful and very, very helpful if you do have a good domain name. It just gives you that extra credibility. But, um, for example, a company uh, that really understands the power of a domain name will go and register the generic equivalents. Like if you typed in see the baby or babies, I think it's baby.com, that should take you to Johnson & Johnson. If you type in loans.com, that will take you to Bank of America. Um, so companies that really understand the power of a direct type in generic domain name will register it, uh, and they'll often register hundreds if not thousands of these domains and all point them back to their main business website. Because that way they're getting, basically they're getting uh, free traffic forever and a day. Um, I mean, if, if any of the big hotel chains had really had their heads switched on, they would have... Uh, you know, like the Hiltons and the, the Hyatt, yes. right? they were on a registered hotel on hotels.com, but they didn't. They're owned by you know private group. Um, you know, but you, you would have owned that segment forever and a day, but uh, they didn't do it. So now yeah, someone else is reaping the rewards. Yeah, good old hindsight is 2020, isn't it? It is. It is. <laughs> why don't we so, Why don't we wrap this up a little bit and kind of bring it back into context if we could for those who are maybe brand new to the business and they're affiliates mm -hmm. and they're and they're getting warmed up they're getting started now they've heard us talk a lot about domain names and you and really a different business uh in you know than what we are typically doing over this end of the of the pond yep where we uh we go out and we build information rich websites and we get paid by referring traffic to a merchant who will pay us a commission or maybe from some Google AdSense and we'll get paid that way or a combination of both plus other ways we can monetize our site. Somebody mm -hmm. that's coming in that's looking at this thinking, okay, I, I need to get a domain name for my site. We've talked about boxing in the domain name, meaning epilepsymoms.com, you might as well get the .net, the .org as well, plus get the dash version of the .com. Yes. Would you, agree, would, you, would you agree that's a good strategy? Absolutely. If, if it's a case of you're going to be developing a domain name, it's a great strategy. If you're only buying them as a domain name, it's probably not because it's not going to really do you any good. Uh, but if you're actually developing a site and you want to try and protect it or box it in, as, as you're saying, 
Yeah, and yes, that's a, a fantastic strategy because it just eliminates the, the use of other domain names that could be potentially mistaken for your, your site. For those who have existing domain names that are thinking that they may be interested in selling them, you're suggesting mm-hmm. they can head over. Which one would you recommend they go to? You said cdu.com, cdnam.com. Which, which one would yeah. you recommend highly? Um, I, I recommend uh, either of them. I mean, I use both. Um, also, I guess you can uh, you can put your your domain name up for auction at both. Um, I I think they have uh, regulations that you can only have it listed uh, at any given time with one. Most okay. of them. Okay. Um, so you just want to check the check the with them on that, depending on who you go to. Uh, but Cedo is actually, they're the largest domain name aftermarket company. Um, so that's an excellent place to start. And, uh, you know, they, they do all the domain name payment escrow management side of things. So uh, but they, they'll they take their cut on whatever you sell it for. Uh, and that varies depending on the price that you sell it for. But what they'll do is um, quite often, like if you're just selling a domain name on eBay, um, it's it's there's not really a, an escrow system set up there because you know you'll go and pay money uh, or transfer the domain name to someone and then you're reliant on them making the payment to you. Whereas with systems like Cedo and Domain Name Aftermarket, they'll actually um, make sure all of that goes smoothly and not hand over the ownership or, or to either party until it's all done properly. So you yeah. sort of protect yourself there. So either one of those is a great place to start. There's lots of uh, good information on those sites. Um, but I'll, I'll probably start with Cedo as a, as a good place to go. So before we wrap it up, is there, and I'd like to get your contact information for everybody because I know you do some great podcasts on, on this exact topic for those that may want to dig in a little bit more. Anything else you want to share before we uh, call it a call? Oh, look, I think it's just use your common sense and, and don't go mad. Look, if you're getting into domaining as a as a business, uh, it's you know it's fairly involved. There's a lot of work, a lot of study. I mean, I spend hours and hours and hours and hours a day uh, researching, reading, and all that sort of stuff. And it's something that I really enjoy. Um, but if you're really just trying to find a good domain or a few domain names to 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 work on and, and develop, just take your time and and before you jump in. Um, make sure that everything lines up and makes sense before you go and spend your, your money. I mean, if you can get a domain name that's unregistered off, off the cuff, then fantastic. Um, otherwise, if you're going to be paying hundreds of dollars, just do your due diligence, make sure there's no trademarks, uh, anything that could possibly come down to, to bite you in the backside later on. Yes. Um, and and tr- and definitely try and stick with the .com, or if, you, if you're in a country like Australia or UK or or you know, try and get also your your country code extension, so dot com dot au dot code uk etc. Yes. Well, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ed K. Smith, thank you so much for uh, joining me for Coffee Talk. Before we uh, go, maybe you could uh, share your your website with us. So for those who want to go listen to your podcast and learn a little bit about a little bit more about demanding, would you uh, share that with us? Yeah, it's ozdomainer dot com. So uh, o z D O M A I N E R dot com. Ozdomainer dot com. Um, yeah, this podcast on there interview lots of uh, different people in the domain name industry, um, so including yourself. So feel free to go over. If you've got any questions, just you can either put a note down in the comment section or, or send me an email at ed at ozdomainer dot com. Very good, Ed. Well, thank you, uh, thank you again for joining us for Coffee Talk. And, uh, we'll My pleasure. You, you betcha. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Take care. You, you betcha. Bye bye. See you. See you all. Bye bye. To learn more about James Martell, the School of Internet Marketing, and how you or someone on your staff can quickly and easily learn how to develop a successful online presence for your personal or corporate brand, visit the School of Internet That's www.theschoolofinternetmarketing.com.